Greetings to all of humanity's real joys. My pleasure is always my honor to be out here in nature. Well connected and always bring to you this message of emancipation whereby I'm pointing you to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And I'm real happy to bring this message concerning Titan to you because I've been a Titan for many, many years. As a matter of fact, I would have tightened for about, say, 25 years, having been involved in secular Christianity for over 25 years. And based on what I would have experienced being in secular Christianity is that Malachi chapter 3 is what was used to actually convince me concerning tithes and offering and especially the promise of Malachi 3 and 10. That the windows of heaven will be opened up to me and pour me out a blessing. And every one of us would like to receive a blessing. Every one of us would like to see expansion in our life. Every one of us would like to see ourselves having been and doing that which we so desire. So each and every one of us actually believe in prosperity. Okay, because actually there's no virtue in poverty. But to be honest with you, when we look more deeply and we understand that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically, then we would realize that when it comes to tithing, that you're supposed to take that one tenth of everything that you actually earn and give it to no one else but yourself. And that is why I would have written this book. It's called How to Open the Floodgates of Abundance and show you how to open the floodgates of abundance by explaining to you Malachi chapter 3. So this whole book right here is based on Malachi chapter 3. Okay, so it says... How to open the floodgates of abundance. Malachi chapter 3 explained perfectly. Okay. It is being explained perfectly to you. So you would understand it the right way and apply it in your life. Now, my brother, my sisters, you're, if you're listening to me right now, this is a challenge that I'm putting forth to you. Okay. Now, if you have been involved in secular Christianity and you, you've paid tight and you haven't gotten the results, I'm saying to you, change is very much important. So what you're going to do now is make sure you, ch you save one tenth of everything that you have. Uh, if you're working, uh, you have any source of income, that one tenth must first be yours. Keep it to yourself first. And you will see the difference that it would make in your life. Now, let's get a little bit more deeper. If there is a God outside of yourself and this God is invisible and he lives in the sky then it means that this God who's supposed to be the creator omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent if he's the creator and money is being created money was first a thought it was first an idea it was first an imagine it was first imagine I mean how could this God want your money how can this God look to you for payment when he is the one who's given you all forms of payment because nothing can exist and it didn't come from God? As a matter of fact, in St. John 1 and 3, it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, my brother and my sisters, you have a choice to believe that him it's speaking of a man 2,000 years ago or a God outside of yourself or you can believe that that him is a personification of your own imagination. Now if you believe it's a personification of your imagination then God in man is man imagination. Then the creator in man is also man's imagination. Therefore because your imagination is God it means that the storehouse or the storeroom of God 
is the mind. And the mind is where you store all of your thoughts. Is where you store all your imaginary acts. All of the images, all of the pictures, all of the things that you will ever see in your mind's eye. They are all stored in the mind. And the Bible tells you in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 11 that the world is being downloaded within your mind. That eternity is within the mind. That everything is within the mind. And the world that you're seeing without, it is actually within. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, it means that when you understand how the mind works and you understand that it is your own thoughts that is creating your personality and creating your reality, that you will understand that tightening and half tightening have to do with your thinking. Therefore, if we are using just one tenth of our mental capacity, and that one tenth of our mental capacity is because this system has been structured in such a way to keep us limited. It means that when we remove ourselves or shift from that left brain way of thinking, which is the way of limitation, okay, and we get into the right brain way of thinking whereby we tap into the sixth sense, where we tap into that place where we are limitless. It means when we do that, we are surrendering everything and giving everything to the I am, to God within us. We are surrendering everything to our imagination, which is God in man. So we are giving our all to the God that is within us and we are trusting the God that is within us. That is why we are told in Matthew 6, 33, that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. Because in essence, it is saying that when we seek to know who we are first and we discover our true essence, we discover that the kingdom is within man. And Luke 17, 21 tells you that, that do not let any man say, Lo here, I lo there, I have you to look outside of yourself. For the creator is within you. Therefore, when you discover the creator within you, which is the kingdom within you, you will discover the king also. And when you discover the king, you discover the secret of creation. Because the king of creation is your imagination. So my brother and my sisters, when you realize that, then you have to pay tribute to your imagination by giving one tenth of everything you ever own to yourself. Showing that you love yourself, you embrace yourself and you put yourself first. Because you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give love if you do not have love. So my brother and my sisters, when you give without the right understanding of the laws that governs humanity and the laws that governs the universe, you are given amidst your loss. You are given with the wrong concept. And you are given out of ignorance. But here in this, in this book, I'm teaching you how to give in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding out of the love of your heart because the love you possess for yourself. Because the love that you possess for yourself would mean the love that you would have for others. Because when you discover yourself, you would discover that everyone else is actually your own self pushed out and their different version of yourself. Therefore, you would never put anyone before yourself. You will never put a pastor before yourself. You will never put a God outside of yourself before yourself. Because everything you do and say, it has to first be imagined, it has to first be a thought, it always points right back to you. So it's all about you. So my brother and my sisters, you realize that there is no receipt when you pay tithes. Okay? And there's no way you can get back your money when you pay tithes. So even if you've been paying tight for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and God hasn't been true to his promise, you're not seeing any windows of heaven being opened up to you and put you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to store. You look around and you see the people who do not even pay any form of tithing or even who are not even religious. You see that they are prospering and you are not prospering and widening your borders as you're supposed to be. Also, you're reading in the Bible of a God who's rich and abundant and have abundance and you're not seeing riches and abundance in your life therefore you have to be honest with yourself 
you have to confront yourself. It is only when you confront yourself and question yourself that you are actually questioning God because the self of man is God and God must be true to his promises. And once you, you see in that these promises are not being um, kept, it is your right to investigate. So my brother and my sisters, when you investigate more about how you use your currency or your finances or whatever it is that you possess that you think that you should give, okay? Remember, giving is receiving and you can never reap what you didn't sow. So my brother and my sister, it's very important for you to know that you supposed to be living a life of abundance once you're living in the attitude of, of giving and tighten encourage giving and I'm not against giving but I'm saying that you have to give with wisdom and understanding that is why it's very important to know first of all who you are because only when you know exactly who you are you will understand the principle of giving and that is why tithing is the biggest scam that the church system is using to rob people and to keep them blind keep them poor broke and keep them miserable and in mediocrity so my brother my sisters if you want to make a change in your life i recommend this book for you how to open the floodgates of abundance based on malachi chapter 3 and i'm interpreting the bible to you esoterically pointing you to look inwardly and to realize that your thought frequency is what is creating your reality. Now, my brother and my sisters, I think what I would have said to you that it makes sense to you and it helps you, but you must be willing to put what I'm saying, what I'm saying to work for you by first of all learning to save one tenth of everything that you will ever earn. Always save one ten. Put one ten aside for you first. And love yourself and embrace yourself. Believe in yourself and always say positive things to yourself. And do not forget to always meditate. Always visualize. And always affirm the things that you so desire in your life. And when you receive those things that you so desire in your life, remember... That you must save one tenth of everything you earn. At least one tenth. You can save as much more than that. But at least. The picture I'm trying to get across to you. Never give to anyone one tenth. Outside of yourself. Give that one tenth to yourself. It is your right. It is all about you. The Bible is your spiritual autobiography. So with that being said my brother and my sister I believe. I would have said enough and I want to thank you very much for listening to me. And I want to say to you, if this is the very first time that you listen to me and what I'm saying to you, that it makes sense to you, really resonating with you. If you haven't subscribed already, I'm encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment or to share this video. But most of all, I'm encouraging you to go and get this book and let the windows of heaven open to you and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room enough because you would be willing to share your gift, your ability, your talents, your everything that the spirit in you will reveal to you okay you will be able to share it because you'll be filled and running over with the wisdom knowledge and understanding that will be poured out to you so with that being said my brother my sister i want to say peace love you all i'm out